Hey guys, how y'all doing? I'm just taking care of some technical stuff here. For a moment before we get started. So just bear with me. In the meantime, let me know how you guys are doing in the comments. What's up? What's new? How you feeling? All right, so I'm just taking care of some technical stuff. Just give me a second. Let me know how y'all doing. All right. All right, guys. How are you guys? Get a little talkative. <laughs> um, I'm having some tea. It's really hot right now, so I can't really quite sip it, but I'm having some tea um, at 9.30. Um, Perseus of NDR is going to check in for maybe just 10, 15 minutes. And they just had an event in New York. Um, I have some pictures that when he joins us, um, I'm going to put on the screen and show you guys, share with you guys. I used to attend these events all the time um, in New York and while I'm extremely, extremely, extremely happy to be in Florida, um, I'm sad that I couldn't, I couldn't be there yesterday. But he's going to tell us all about it. Um, I almost tried to make it at the last minute. <laughs> I almost did. Um, I reconnected with a friend in New York that I hadn't spoken to in a long time. And, you know, he was like, oh, you know, you can stay with me whenever you come and visit. You, you know, and I said, oh, that's great. Okay. And then I kind of got motivated and um, and then I contacted Perseus and said, when, when is that event again? When is it? And it was just too soon. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't possibly plan everything in time. Not to mention that getting a plane ticket uh, at the last minute like that would have just killed me, I'm sure. I mean, I don't really know. I didn't check, but I'm assuming it's, it's just... Uh, Typically, they're more expensive if you get a, a plane ticket at the last minute, so. Still too hot. Um, so where are you guys from? Where in the country are you guys from? Let me know. Where are you guys watching from? Or if you're uh, maybe even out of the country. I have a lot of European um, clients, but I don't know that they watch these live streams. I, I get the sense that um, they're very into, you know, spiritual stuff, not necessarily political, but spiritual stuff. And um, uh, I'm not sure that a live stream like this would interest them t terribly, but um so I'm going to assume that there's not really people from out of country. But other than that, guys, where are you guys from? I'm just curious where in the country. Oh, and Raquel, you may not be on here, Raquel, but when you get on, um, she asked me a question last week. She posted it in the comment section. It was after the fact that I did this live stream. And um, I wanted to answer her question. Um, and I'm happy to answer any of your guys' questions if you do have any about um, either what's going on in the world or spirituality. I'm going to see how this goes. I do have cards here in front of me. Um, I was going to maybe offer up asking personal questions, doing sort of quickies, like um, for, you know, $2 for a question that I can answer for you uh, with the tarot. Uh, so I may test that out at the end of this, at of the main segment here. I may do that. So nobody wants to tell me where in the country they're viewing from.
Okay, great. <laughs> um, so, does anybody want to tell me why they don't like to participate? What's that about? Shan Hooley, uh, Fort Lauderdale. Wow, you're very close to me. Very close. I'm um, West Palm Beach. All right, Chan, hang in there. And then at the end, you know, um, we'll get to the reading part. Okay, we'll see how this goes here. We're going to be joined by Perseus at 930. And he's only going to stick around for like um, 10, 15 minutes. He's going to let us know how the IndyR event ha went in New York that I was um, kind of sad to miss. I, I kind of, I miss it, but they do have one in Sarasota, which eventually I'll be going to as well. So, um, all right guys. So, uh, you know, in some ways, I know that you guys have been keeping up with me to some degree and watching, you know, some of the videos or listening to some of the audios um, that I put out. Um, so some of this is maybe a little bit redundant, but obviously the, the, you know, one of the purposes of this or the title here is what's to come in the 3D to 5D transition, which where, you know, um, yeah, we're in the middle of technically, um, the way I'm seeing it is We've been in this transition for a while, but what happens is, is that as we get, mm, how do I say this? So the way I look at the transition, if you look at it at like a mountain, right? Or like a hill, where we're at now is at the, is, is, is towards the top of the hill. We're almost at the top. So I kind of look at 2024, those last few, I don't know, um, meters, I don't know what you want to call them, um, getting to the top and then um, things are going to start to become more obvious and more obvious and more obvious. I mean, to a lot of us, things are already obvious, right? Things are already obvious. Nobody's surprised that I still call him Puff Daddy. I'm aging myself. I, I don't really, you know, what's this changing name shit? P. Diddy. Pity Diddy. <laughs> um, you know, like nobody's surprised at that, right? So, so those of us who are more awake, that's not surprising. But it is for other people in the world, obviously. But what's going to be the more surprising part than all this stuff coming out, that's because that's not really the surprising part, especially to the awake people, like I said. The surprising part is how you're going to see your wonderful government is going to do absolutely nothing about this. It's a show. It looks like they're going after him. Now, they may to some degree go after him, but, and, and if he's killed and they'll say he committed suicide, right? Um, if he's killed, it's not about finding evidence and actually Candace Owens, I think she brought this up and it's so true. Um, it's about hiding evidence. It's the exact opposite. So what's going to be more obvious is not the bad things that these people do to us. That's already obvious, not to the rest of the world necessarily. That's going to become more obvious to them. But what's going to get even particularly obvious, the main focus of obviousness is that how you're not cared for, you're not protected by your government, you're paying taxes for no damn good reason. Okay? That's what's going to be obvious. How your government is your enemy. That's what's going to become obvious. Let me see if my tea's ready now. Nobody else wants to say where they're from. Why are 42 people interested in what's being talked about here, but there's no interest in participating? 
That's really interesting to me. <laughs> All right, so um, recently I put up an Abraham Hicks video which talked about, well, it was titled, um, it had to do with childhood trauma, but one of the points of it is sort of locked in timelines because you are the creator of your own reality, but you do forget that, or you don't want to look at sometimes that there are realities that you have created. If you've created it, you've locked yourself into it. If you've created it, manifested it, you've locked yourself into a particular timeline. It's not something that you can cancel, 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 suck it back in and take it away. You can't do that. Okay. If you've created it, you've created it. So some of you are taking this law of attraction thing in a way that is very toxic. And that's where the toxic positive thinking comes in. And a lot of you haven't really accepted that the transition from 3D to 5D in terms of what you have manifested, what you have created at this point. Um, there are things in this timeline that you've locked yourself into that are going to be ugly. They're going to be and a lot of people have not come to that acceptance. And, um, you know, it's interesting because this is not a QAnon channel. And if you are a QAnon person, you're going to find me incredibly offensive. You, you know that already, I think, most of you. But there is an element of, you know, that whole eating the popcorn thing that is sort of true for the higher consciousness people. While you cannot take away the negative things, well, I don't know. Negative is a perception or bad and good is a perception. So the harsh things, I'm going to call them the harsh things, war, possibly civil war. Civil war is, I'm going to try to get into the detail of that a little bit if that happens, because it still doesn't have to. There's a version of it that still doesn't have to. You haven't locked yourself into a timeline of absolute civil war. It doesn't have to happen. I'll try to tap into that. Um, but um, those kinds of things, war, World War III, they're going to try to do that. It's arguable, arguable that we're already there. And these are the kinds of things that people want to deny. But you've locked yourself in that timeline. And Abraham Hicks in that video, the way Esther, who channels Abraham, describes this, it's sort of like jumping out of a plane without your parachute. Are you going to law of attraction a parachute onto you after you've jumped out of the plane? Guys, keep it real. No, you're not. No, you're not. You've manifested jumping out of the plane without the parachute. What's the answer to that? Abraham puts it this way. Hang in there. It'll be over in a second. Ain't going to change that. Ain't going to change that. So I do not recommend this toxic, positive thinking that is going to not only get you nowhere, but leave you incredibly disappointed as well as incredibly unprepared. However, that eat your popcorn and watch the show effect, that can count for something because those of you in a high enough vibration, while these harsh things are going on, you are the creator of your own reality and you can have a comfortable transition no matter how harsh it looks out there. You can have a very comfortable transition. Yes, you can. Okay. You don't have to trap yourself in the negativity that a lot of the planet will be going through. Um, what else do I want to say about such things? Civil war. Okay. As far as civil war between the people, there's still time to not have that happen. 
That timeline isn't locked. That we can avoid that. That's up to you. That's up to the rest of humanity and how they move forth with this. Civil war. Now, there's another aspect of civil war that has to do not between people, but military. White hats, by the way, um, Hi, Bridget from, am I saying that right? Yeah, Bridget from uh, New Jersey. I used to live in New Jersey. I used to live in Rutherford for three years. I loved it, actually. I really, really liked it. I was close enough to New York, but far away, far enough from New York as well. And I loved that because I could live in peace, but then, you know, go out and do something interesting and fun. And luckily, there are plenty of interesting and fun things to do here in West Palm Beach, too, actually. Uh, very much so. Uh, but New York is special, actually, I have to say. But it's crumbling. It's, you know, it's crumbling. Um, side note, speaking of New York, because there are elements of New York that I do miss, but there's no point in missing them too hard because they don't exist anymore. It's completely changed. But um, I have um, a friend. Some of you will remember this person. His name is Josh. And um, he's actually a bartender at Trump Tower in Columbus Circle in New York. And uh, so I, I definitely miss hanging out with him and, and stuff like that. And, um, but we used to do podcasts. Some of them are right here on my channel, but we're talking about like two years ago and stuff like that. And we're gonna start doing them again. So I'm, hap I'm happy about that. Um, I think that should be a lot of fun. And he's very into the, he's very into the esoteric, especially from, um, in terms of hermetic principles. So I'm sure we'll talk a lot about that. Uh, but anyway, um, getting back to the transition from 3D to 5D and what some of that look either look, will look like or can look like, because not all of it is fully, unfortunately, there's going to be, you know, harsh things that are locked in place as far as the timeline is concerned. But like I said, you can live it absolutely comfortably. Um, I'm not going to rehash what I said, but I would say if you're just tuning in, go to the beginning of this when I explained it really well. But while we can avoid the civil war, we're not locked into the civil war in terms of people, we the people. But when it comes to military, um, that's a different type of civil war. And also it's, um, it is likely to happen. Here's the thing about the White Hats, and this is why I'm not Q friendly. The white hats don't have a lot of power. They're they're limited. They they're limited, and the military faction. There's about it's a little under seven hundred generals in the USA, and um somewhere a little over two hundred are white hat oriented. About two hundred are white hats. Okay, um they are smaller than the rest of the generals, and um. It doesn't mean that they can't win the civil war between them. They can, but they need the backing of, of, of we the people. Not necessarily in a physical sense, but we need to be maybe in a physical sense. You haven't locked yourself into that timeline. That's not one that I really see, though, which is good. But um, uh, people need to be vocal about what it is they want. They need to be extremely vo extremely vocal. Why you guys, some of you guys need to start opening up your own channels. Some of you guys need to start opening up, um, um, I don't know. Well, some of you are vocal, I guess on social media, right? I mean, I don't really, I don't do the Twitter. I don't do all the other stuff. I pretty much only do, um, locals and uh, rumble and then sort of, um, Getter and Truth Social are an afterthought. I don't really think they're great platforms, but occasionally I, I just, I use them occasionally. And like I said, they're an afterthought. Um, but more important is get involved in some way, like whether you're poll watchers or writing letters and emails, do that. I'm sure you can take 10 to 15 minutes once a week and write to your politicians. People need to be, be vocal. 
Now we are sort of ahead of this in a way. Um, the Illuminati is very um, not um, they're not really being supported and they they're playing, they're acting as if they're being supported. You have to remember that the mainstream media, while some people are kind of like, uh, you know, how dare the mainstream media says this and how dare they say that they're nobody, they're nothing. You, they don't get viewers. You know, who's viewing them partially us because we're critiquing them but they're not getting viewership. You have internet shows getting way more viewership. And the only reason they're on air is because they have unlimited Illuminati funding. But other than that, they really, they're nobody. They have, they're nobody. They shouldn't even really be on air, but they're not gonna be taken off because they do have unlimited funding. But the Illuminati are really like, oh my God, Nobody's watching these shows. Nobody's watching our propaganda. And if they are watching it, they're really critiquing it. And this is why, okay? And it doesn't mean we've won the war already. A lot of people, that's where the QAnon people fail in that. But um, this is why a lot of them are trying to make deals with the white hats, even if the white hats are smaller than the black hats in terms of number. Because in some way, militarily, they're smaller. But in the big picture, when you include both the white hat generals, including we, the people together, we're bigger. And they're, they're realizing now they're not falling for our propaganda. So let's start making deals with the white hats about what we can do. And one of and the deals that they're trying to do is like, don't tarnish our names. We'll just slowly stop or we'll disappear or, you know, they don't, they're trying not to tarnish their name. They're trying to work out these deals. And just because the white hats are the white hats, it doesn't mean I always agree with them because so very often I do not. And some people just, they just need to be put out to pasture. Frankly, they need to be put out to pasture. Okay. In some ways I'm less judgmental. And some of you kind of know this. I'm less judgmental of the Illuminati, believe it or not, than you think. Then, well, some of you would know that some of you, you know, less judgmental than you think. And what I mean is that, hey, all is fair in love and war, as they say. And if you're going to allow that to happen, you've allowed that to happen. But we are getting to that point, thank goodness, in, in our um, current events, which will someday be our history, that um, we're not allowing that to happen anymore. But some of you are still gaining your power, you know, um, some of you are still gaining your power in, um, in, 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 in sort of reaching, um, your own goalpost of having enough. Okay. Someone says, bro, you're getting it. We, the people is exactly right. Uh, heavy lifting required. Yes. Yes. Um, be about that good work, y'all. Yeah, man, it's true. It's true. Uh, heavy lifting is required, and that's just the reality of it. That's just the reality of it, okay? Some form. Now, that heavy lifting is going to look different for everybody, okay? You know, grandmas and children aren't, you know, you can still do something, but you're not, don't think that it's a one-size-fits-all in terms of the heavy lifting, okay? Don't think that. We have five minutes before Perseus enters the room. And again, he's just going to share with us um, what the event was like last night. I keep thinking, I don't know why I keep thinking about it and doing that to myself, that I, I that I was sorry that I wasn't there and I missed it. But what's the point, right? Which is interesting. I guess it really means something to me because I'm actually not like that. I'm, I, I tend to just look ahead, look ahead and not look back. All right. Those of you who participated, thank you. I appreciate it. And um, Florida and New Jersey. And that's kind of cool for me in the sense that I'm a Floridian now. Um, um, registered to vote. Uh, poll watcher as well. Um, and I love Florida. And 
But then there's my New York roots, which is where I get a lot of my tood from, a lot of my attitude. Um, but actually, this person's from New Jersey, but the tri-state area, you know, New Jersey, New York, Connecticut. Uh, yeah. Um, hang on, guys. Hang on one second. This is an important text. I don't normally do this, but this is actually important. Okay. All right. Uh, what else can we say? Okay. Archangel says, that was cool hearing my own comment. You're killing it, bro. Thanks, man. Well, thank you, Santa Cruz, California. Uh, feel free to share what it's like in California. I haven't been to California in years. My grandparents do live in San Diego. It's the probably one of the more conservative cities in uh, California. I haven't been there in, mm, I think I, I think I was 18 the last time I was there. Wow, a long time ago. Um, yeah. Um. Perseus, you're kidding me. Get out of here, dude. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yeah, the state in general is a dumpster fire. Yeah, um, I hear you. I hear you. We're, we're talking about California at the moment. Um, I, I mean, I, I, California is beautiful, though. I... How'd it get like that? <laughs> like New York, I can kind of understand how it got like that. California, not as much. It's like California to me, it's the drier, it's the drier um, and mountainous version of Florida in a way. Um, it's beautiful. Uh, I, I feel like there's still hope for it though. California's gonna, would clean itself up before New York does, I think. I think so. Um, way too kind, Perseus, man. Perseus is going to join us. You can chime in anytime you want now, um, uh, Perseus. And um, I can't wait to hear all about the event that you guys had yesterday. I'm having some tea here. Uh, I mean, you guys know I'm usually a kombucha guy or a coffee person, but I do have tea from time to time. And uh, I'm having like a relaxed tea. Uh, so I don't know. I just thought that would be good tonight. Just a relaxed tea. I just want to take this kind of easy. That's another thing, guys, is that what's being lost, we can't get lost in a political pendulum. We have to live our lives and we have to live good ones and we have to live happy ones. I don't care what's going on in the world. You are the creators of your own reality. There is no reason that you can't live well and that you can't live a happy life. All right, we're going to connect now with Perseus. And I think you're on Perseus. All you have to do is, um, uh, let me see here. Yep, just unmute yourself, I think is the only thing left to do. Hey, the the icons are sorry to just like coming in bitching. Yeah, We're, I'm in New York, so we you know I'm like in the New York and for really like I see thing I just call it out. But these icons, hello Rumble, if you're watching, you need to fix it. Okay, it's super confusing. Mm -hmm. to me. It's not intuitive. <laughs> I agree, it's not intuitive. Um, yeah. they, they, I mean. In their defense, they're really doing so well, though. Um, I love the general concept and what they're trying to do. And I just hope that over time, they really perfect it. But uh, mm -hmm. there's some things that should be more intuitive for sure. Yeah, yeah. But uh, hello, everyone. And thanks for letting me crash your party. Hey, I'm sorry yeah. I couldn't crash yours yesterday. <laughs> uh, well, you were, you were there 
in, in spirit, you know, not to sound uh, like uh, the corny, but yeah. you know, we're, we're bringing that energy in, into that event yesterday. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I, I have, uh, I'm going to, I'm, I'm just going to keep it short, you know, as much as yeah. I, I can yeah. like I'm rum rumbled on, but. Um, you go right into it. I'm going to start. Uh, I have three. Well, actually, I, I'm sorry. I just thought maybe want to break the ice a little, like, you know, I'm going to see how, what you're up to and, oh. you know. Uh, before we just uh, talk about what happened yesterday, but yeah, uh, so I'm I'm headed back. Uh, I'm catching the plane uh, on Wednesday, and this is a very short trip. It's a very short trip for me. Yeah, um, and uh, it's it's strange. It's strange. Like I'm not connecting with this place anymore. Mm -hmm. But there are people here that I care that you and I care about. Yeah, yeah, there are. So it, it's it's uh, I'll still be shuttling up here, um, but uh, one one of the things that uh, really uh, made me emotional yesterday when I wrapped up the event and I announced to the to the group, uh, and I, I don't want to take for granted that everyone knows what we're talking about the NDR event. Maybe did you set it up for them already? Like the the I did. I let them know that we were going to be talking about it when you arrived. Yeah, but uh, I just made the announcement that because I like you are. I'm in Florida full time now. Um, I cannot, it's not practical for me to do these quarterly speakeasy assemblies and not even twice a year anymore. And now it's just down to, um, well, I shouldn't say just because we're taking a new direction, but it's an annual event now. So, um, and then a lot of people, we had uh, quite a number of uh, first timers who showed up and they were, they were sad, <clears throat> you know, they, they were sad, like, because what they real also were looking for is a community, you know. Yeah. I, I know uh, we we um, community is very important aspect of uh, helping us move to the new timeline too, which is uh, what I talked a lot about. So <clears throat> sorry to kind of like push you off the stage for a second, and you know, but no, uh, I, I wanted you to, <laughs> so it's fine. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yesterday was the the annual, um, and that's not it's called the annual uh, creative assembly. And for for all uh, for all of those who are just watching for the first time, <clears throat> um, Mike and I met um, a long time ago through this uh, this organization association that I founded over thirteen years ago. Um, and my uh, objective back then was to kind of compete in that market. Um, you know, I hate to use the word conservative, but that's kind of like the market where I was trying to teach people about constitutionalism, civics, founding principles, but from a very more transcendent perspective, instead of trying to get you to, okay, uh, now you need to sign up with the, the, the GOP Republican party and you need to call yourself that. It was just more like, this is something you can own without having to park yourself under any of the label. Mm. Um, and I found that, um, I haven't really been making much traction, even though we, we, we were bringing in amazing individuals like Mike. I just knew that kind of in my spirit that people weren't necessarily connecting with <laughs> civics. And um, yesterday, yesterday, there was a lot of thought that went into yesterday's event because I had I just felt guided. And I know it's amazing why I like to be in your on your channel because I can use that. I can say that because <laughs> if I yeah. say that on the other channel, I'd be like, what? Guided. But I, I just felt guided and inspired, inspired to um, maybe not try to teach or not even teach, like get people to think a certain way. Um, try, try something different. And yesterday was all about being very different and, and, uh, and giving people exercises where they can tap into their individual sovereignty and creative spirit. So, um, so what, what I did was create a breakout session of, um, a breakout session. So you, you, you came and I gave you like what the assignment is and you would break up into, uh, these groups of four or five. Um, and that's why we rented that place too. You know, you remember you were there last time. There are these very cozy, nooks and corners so that people can break into these uh, uh, breakout groups 
and I gave them two scenarios um, to to solve. So uh, I could read them to you right now. Uh, that sure. for the breakout yes. session. So um, this is what you spoke about yesterday. Yeah. All right. right. I'm going to go ahead and flash the pictures on the screen sure. while you're talking. Sure. Sure. Um, so. So the narrative is the year is 2028. Okay, we don't know who is in office. It, that, that's immaterial to this exercise. The year is 2028. Scenario A, an Amish dairy farmer in rural Pennsylvania has been issued a cease and desist by that state's unelected environmental agency. The farmer cannot produce, is not allowed to produce distribute or sell any of his products as his equipment and methods are not in compliance with the regime's zero carbon and 15 minute cities initiative. So the farmer risks losing his home, livestock and livelihood. So that is one scenario that um, the, uh, the breakout session has to solve. So the, chap the, the, the assignment is think of any new technology, technology, cultural trends or legislative imperatives that you can conjure up to prevent this event from happening? Or if it's already happening, what can you do to help this farmer continue to sell mm. under the regime's nose? So that's that's scenario A. Scenario B, um, 50 miles away in New York in a 15 minute city, a young mother needs to buy baby formula but her digital wallet has been suspended because she violated the regime's speech guidelines. She had posted a meme that was critical of something called Gender Zero, a proposed New York State bill to designate mothers as birthing persons on birth certificates. So, the um, so I, I finished up the 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 the, the, the these two scenarios with uh, this narrative. Uh, you, the members of this audience. Imagine that you're a member of an underground society called DARC, D-A-R-C-H. That's an acronym for Decentralized Archons. Archons is the uh, ancient Greek word for rulers. But that's my way of saying being sovereign. With it's about decentralization. Right. And He's not actually comparing you to Archon demons, so just the people. No, Ar Archon is actually a, a Greek word for, for rulers. Right. And in this case, we are really we're sovereign. So this decentralized. So you are a society of what I call classical futurists. I made that word up. Uh, classical futurists, people who came from an original timeline that was headed to a good timeline, but they saw that this timeline was like they're essence, living in the wrong hijacked. future. What? In essence, being hijacked, perhaps. Hijacked. Mm -hmm. You know, but they have a sense that something is not right. Mm -hmm. the classical futurists. But they also have the means within themselves and the talent to invent new things, new technologies that are in keeping with the original timeline that they were born into. And yeah. so, so the assignment was, Simon, is based on the two scenarios I've just described. Discuss the technology, cultural trends, and legislative initiatives that you have to come up with to secure the liberty of the persons in either scenario. And then pre present your proposal to the audience. So that was what they did. They broke up and uh, it was, uh, people were really into it. You know, it, it's. I'm into it actually. I think that's really brilliant. I had no idea. You and I talk a lot, but I had no idea that you were planning that for the event to actually sort of. Yeah, because you know, you know what that does because in, in past events that you've been to, you know, the format is I get up and for the audience, you don't know, uh, Mike has also helped co-pilot those, those events before you come up, but it's just like, I get up, I give a stump speech, freedom, liberty, and then people are like, okay, nice, pep talk, what's next? But this one, I felt guided, like you have to give people, like they have to start thinking like policymakers. They have to start thinking like the people inventing the technology around them. They have to be given that practice and exercise because what that does is it, it it opens like their third eye to their sovereignty and imagine, you know what, they're not, so at this point, they're not waiting for someone else to come. They're not waiting for an Elon Musk to solve their problem. They're not waiting for a Mr. T to solve the problem. They, this is, this is world building. I just printed out here. This is like a world building um, imagination, which is actually powerful because now they get to actually uh, practice the power of creation right there. Yeah. And, 
Um, so uh, at the end, at the so they were all given ten minutes each to to come up with their um, their inventions of what this new timeline could look like. It's either a new timeline or they could help the person who is living in that timeline. I know it sounds a little confusing here because I didn't. I don't want to. It's the same thing, though. Yeah, and it's so interesting. All of them, just by the all of them. So a lot of our members um, in NDR happen to come from creative backgrounds. They also come from technology backgrounds, and it, it's like, why haven't I? Why didn't I do this 13 years ago? It's because for the first time, they suddenly felt tapped in into who they truly are as creative people. Like, oh, this is something for me to solve. For me to solve now, not okay. Let's wait for Elon Musk to do something, or I'll wait for Mr. T to do something, kind of thing. And it was uh, so. They, they uh, at the end of 10 minutes, they uh, they had to pick one person from their little breakout group. They would come up and present to the group their their solutions, their solutions for how they want to help the Amish farmer and the mother, you know, yeah. who is being chased by the regime. And the, the, it was so interesting the, the the answers they came up with. They even like surprised themselves, like, how, how come I never thought about yeah. it? Yeah. So um, it was this confirmation for me last night, like, yes, this you should just continue to do more of this world building. I, I call it world building exercise. Very important, actually. World building and building this timeline, and uh, it went it went really really well, you know. Yeah. Uh, so uh, everyone got to kind of vote like who who they thought was the best answer. So interestingly, the people, the breakout group that had the most um, technology people who make uh, do programming, computer engineering for a living, they yeah. came up with something that was interesting because I expected them to like propose well, well this app is. Uh, we're gonna come up with an app that will allow the the mother to buy from the, the Amish dairy farmer, like crypto or some. I expect them to say that, but they wow. came up with like a totally non-technical solution that everyone was surprised. They said, "Well, um, so one of the members in that breakout session, he 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 immigrated from from an Arab country. He, he he's an ex-Muslim now, but he was born Muslim. He says that in that world, in, in the Arab world, they have a system of uh, peer-to-peer." It's not money laundering. I, I'm not explaining it right, but he said that it's almost like a human version of blockchain. For those of you, I don't know whether you heard of blockchain. It's kind of the decentralized crypto, but it's actually a human version of it. So, um, and they were all very uh, bullish on this idea, even though they were technical people. So I was just, you know, it was very interesting to watch how people's creativity to start opening up. And you, and they, for the first time, they could actually see almost like this future through this exercise. Mm -hmm. So um, that that's just a very quick summary of, of, uh, of last night. And we're gonna be doing more of these kind of like world building, yeah. you know, exercises. I, I'm not surprised that that, um, that was so popular, this sort of human blockchain concept. Um, was it somewhat similar to bartering or something like that or how you know okay the way the way he described it was i have to i have their notes and one of the things i'm going to do is i'm going to have to build a uh, build a url a website so that we can put it on there so they can continually work work on it throughout uh, the year uh, uh, but that's the other concept wow so that by the time they come back next year there would be a working prototype so it's basically okay laying brick by bricks until it becomes a manifestation. Yeah, but yeah. To go back, uh, what their idea was that you need to have a system of 10 to 13. Did I just say 13 again? Yeah. <laughs> Pe people that you can trust. And the money is basically all 13 people have to check each other. They, they're, it's like it's like a check and balance. It's, it's truly yeah. decentralized. So someone someone would hold a ledger, but the money would be kind of like past, and I'm not saying it right, I have to read the notes. Like if one person needs the money, this person here will loan them that money, but this person here would check to make sure that they got it. And this person here would make sure that that transaction, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a ledger system. And yeah, you know, yeah. I, I, got, I got it now, I, now I got it. Um, I didn't quite pick it up the first go round. 
That is incredible. I have to say that it doesn't surprise me that that is one of the most popular ones because the truth is um, that while we can absolutely 100% incorporate technology into all of this, into part of solutions, um, true sovereignty isn't really found in technology. It just, it just That's isn't. True. Okay, it just isn't. It, it, it could be messed with at any time. And that's just the the reality of it until, um, you know, um, the, I don't know what I want to call it, the side of good has full control over it, um, but it can be messed with. So, um, and to tell you the truth, what you said or what um, this person has said, I know who you're talking about too, what he has said kind of reminds me of the way I call this channel that I sort of run it like a Masonic Lodge. Okay, and this is why, while I do believe in freedom of speech, um, when it comes to this Masonic Lodge, it's, we're not going to just be saying whatever the hell we want to say willy-nilly because it will break the, the chain, the blockchain, you know, the purpose of this channel. And then it just becomes this um, um, uh, um, anarchist sort of free-for-all. And that's not what this channel is going to be. So the free speech, in essence, comes in the form of everybody being of the same level of frequency or consciousness generally. And within that, not to be confused with an echo chamber now, within that, you have discussion and expand upon the consciousness that you already have that's already you know, heightened uh, in comparison to other people. Uh, hopefully that made sense. So if people could just do whatever they wanted to do in that system, that blockchain wouldn't work. It has to work in a certain way for it to actually be foolproof. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, uh, and you know, um, I say this all the time, the, the 12 step programs of the AA meetings, they, they, all those systems, they, take from the same systems of the masonic the old masonic lodges so yeah 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 and then and then um so just to add to the uh, that that idea which again everyone was taken aback because that breakout group was mostly hardcore programmers like it was surprising but yeah. i was reminded of something that we we and this is for everyone you, you have to remember that the ultimate technology in the universe the ultimate technology on this planet right now are us you yes yeah. I mean, MIT, yeah, the, the be best, as good as it is if it wasn't for us, the best scientists on this planet still cannot replicate your eye. You know that, right? They cannot replicate the neurons in your brain. I'm not saying that we're machine, but it's like we are the penultimate. Yeah. You're talking about technology. We are this. You, you inhabit your you are the technology. Yeah. You know? And that's why the what the regime is trying to do is create like a version of that. Um, but there are some things they can never replicate. So, I mean, yeah. just like those ideas that we came up with, I don't think a machine could come up with that. So, um, yeah, so, so last night was very exciting. And I had, um, I had kind of built the event as a, re it's called a regenerative event for thinkers, creators, and design of celebrity. So the word regenerative suggests that it's not just one event. It's mm -hmm. it's what started there will keep coming back and start building up and building up. So mm -hmm. so I was really excited. I mean, you know, I never thought I'd say this, but uh, why why would I say that? No, actually, I'm. I mean, I'm surprised. I was pleasantly surprised by yesterday that that it's just after 13 years. This was actually the first event that I felt yeah. very. Um, very like there's something there's a purpose to it i just you know and everyone felt that too you know the, the idea of a timeline yep i i love it um that's really cool so it, it shows how you've um this group has really grown into their purpose or ndr itself has grown into its purpose you've ex you've expanded right before in a way my very eyes i mean in june of this year i'll have known you for half a decade is that weird isn't that weird? That is, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh huh. I'll have known you for half a decade. Wow. This is June 2019. 
six months before the um, COVID debacle, which we will never let happen again. And yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, you, your group at the time um, meant a lot to me. And now look what you've expanded into even more. You know, yeah. it, was, it was great for people to be able to have a sense of community. And now you're giving that community purpose. You know? Yeah. Well, I, you know, they, thank, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, it's, I, I've, um, so Mike and I were, were talking like um, off chat, you know, off, uh, offline about how, this direction could also potentially um like the group may contract a little because there, there will be people who um not everyone will want to like th there'll be still quite a number of people who want to run on what i call the political hamster wheel you know uh, and i don't know how you would describe i'm sure you have your um, word for, for well that. the unfortunately the QAnon people are a perfect description of the hamster wheel because they really think that um, some higher form of government is going to take care of everything. And it's just not that way. All they would do is reflect what we're doing. Does that make sense? I, I mean, yeah. when we take it into our hands, the government is going to follow our rhythm. Right. And that's a big change. It's what it was supposed to be about 250 years ago, but nonetheless, that, that would be a big change. And within that big change, and I just want to share this with people, that's where you would start to see the government phase out and turn into something else. So in higher consciousness levels, they have sort of mm, cons councils that don't run things, but uh make sure everything is in check and working for the greater good so on and so forth now this would take hundreds of years to shift but let's not go there let's not let's not drive ourselves too crazy in the mind with all that yeah. but um but I, I i want people to know that none of this means that they can't be living a good life right now it really doesn't mean that and this is an adventure have fun with it yeah right so anyway, I didn't mean to cut you off, but um, yeah, anyway, the, 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 uh, the QAnon types of people, they're caught in that hamster wheel, but go ahead. Yeah, so, um, and, and I think that's, that's just, some, this was a, one, of, one of the, so yesterday was also a bit of a relaunch too in, in that respect. Like, you know, I, I, have to, uh, I have to not try to um, appeal to everyone and, and, you know, because what that means is, um, it's not that you you know me i i am actually pretty read up on the headlines and all that i i am mm -hmm. it's just mm -hmm. i my you've heard me say enough that my my chief complaint with how things are kind of set up is they don't give you like a proper call to action that leads you to your sovereignty discover your sovereignty and, and creativity you know um it's the way that how the data is packaged that doesn't lead you to take those action. It's, it's more like, um, this is how it's going to end or someone's, someone else is going to fix, fix it for you kind of thing. Um, so, and I've been trying to, I've been preaching to that crowd for some reason too. And I found that by doing that and trying to do this, the NDR message just kind of becomes diluted or very confusing. So yesterday it was like, you, you need to, there's something shifting. In yeah. the next few decades, in the next few centuries, yeah. you you can't do this like, yeah. you know, those people are going to go that direction, and, and whatever will happen there, but we are we are headed in another direction, and for you to attract people to that who are headed there, they they need to be aware that they have the the means and ability and power to create that world for them, and that's why we we were doing this exercise, mm -hmm. and. Um, so there were uh we, i had an initially a large number of rsvps some did not show up and i take that to to be a sign that they weren't meant to be there but everyone that was there was like really into this and they're like thinking for once not 
um, yeah. being fearful or, or uh, you know, just repeating the same whole same script, the, the sounding like a broken record. Yeah, it was like they came up with the solution. For once, they sound they they knew what it was like to be a policymaker. You know what you want, how you want the world to be. So it, it's um, yeah, I'm, I'm very um, I'm looking for the next one, which will be next year. But then I told everyone, I told this is one one of the direction I'm set out for NDR too. Just just remember, in this new timeline too, we're not only measuring um, decades, we're also measuring centuries. We're also seeing into maybe a thousand years. I know it sounds a little grandiose, but this kind of really opened up their third eye. It was like, wow, this like yeah, we can we can do this. That's what we're building. So when I when I told them that. Well, I'll see you next year. It didn't feel like, well, that's a long way off. It felt like a punctuation to them. Yeah, now yeah. one year we'll have time to keep working on these two scenarios and build a world around it. Yeah. So I am so impressed. I wow. I I just I don't even know what to say. I mean, who else has done this? I'm not sure that I know anybody else or know of anybody else who's who's done this where you have really um, like put into manifestation, people manifesting, <laughs> actually creating their world. That's such a big part of what do you want your 5D world to look like? Okay, because what it is, people think it's just set up for them. Oh, it's 5D and it's just there. And it, the system runs in a certain 5D way but no, you get, you fill in the details. What, what creativity is lost in 5d? No, creativity is amplified in 5d. So you've got to actually use that, you know, ability more. You have to start, you have to use it more. And so this is a, also the way I'm seeing this, this came to mind, how good this is to think this way about the future because some people get lost in thinking about the past, the future too much. Um, but this is a very positive way to look at the future because the way I'm seeing it is that as you, as they work on this, these NDR members work on this in this year, in the next 365 days, they're bringing that future to the yes, now exactly because there is no time really thank thank you you're right and you're you right. must bring you must bring that to the now yeah right okay? that's a that's a a, a a different form of looking at living in the now now yeah. yes live in the now don't get lost in the future but they're not doing that they're being coherent about the future and they're bringing it yes yes yeah. And I'm glad you did that because um, it, we, we have this, something's happening, uh, we're in sync in this because when you were saying that, well, even before you said that, I wanted to say this is a, a very good exercise in law of attraction too. Mm -hmm. There is yeah. so vibrationally aligned with the act of co-creation and creating. Yeah. yeah right. Because um, one of the concepts that we want to do is, like I said, I'm going to put a URL for them, uh, put their ideas there. They're going to be able to log in and keep working on it. And what we imagine will happen next year or in the next decade is that uh, actual prototypes and prototypes, apps, and legislations will actually uh, materialize. We're not just talking about paper anymore. It's like stuff that literally prototypes and even like draft for bills and all that. And we imagine what will happen is that people who want to fund this will also be attracted to this. Because yeah. you know, right now the thing about the hamster wheel is that there's a lot of money in the hamster wheel. People are just throwing money into the hamster wheel, like, oh my gosh, you know, like, yeah. like well, they threw money into Rumble, right? They threw money yeah. into Parlor. There's a lot of cash out there, but it's just not, it's being attracted to things that are not, you know, I've, I'm not throwing shade at Rumble. I'm just saying that there is a lot of opportunities that we could do to uh, attract those, uh, um, those other components that would yeah. that also help this. Uh, make into a reality, um, but it is a reality too. You're right because it's the here and now. It's it's already here, so that that's very powerful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, before I let you go, I want to ask you if um, you probably don't have. Yeah, you don't have exact dates, but you know we know that in New York next year around this time you're going to have the next event. 
What about in Sarasota? Because also I really want to remember, I, I have to stay on top of this myself because I should have stayed on top of it for New York. Um, but it just so happened that um, when I was offered by this friend, hey, just come and stay with me. Um, you know, my, my friend whose name is also Mike that I had, I believe I had mentioned it to you. It was just too close a call. Like I, to, to book tickets at the last minute, to book a flight or whatever at the last minute, it just, it just wouldn't have worked out. And, and, uh, but, um, I really want to be on top of it because I don't want to miss these things for whatever reason. So what's, uh, what's next in Sarasota for the Sarasota chapter? So Sarasota is a completely different animal. The same, same, same vibe, but the, the animal is different. It, it's, it's gun ranges. <laughs> I, I'm, uh, the next one is, is probably the end of April. Um, but, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, all right. I, so not too far from now, actually. Yeah, no, April. I have to. I have to check in with uh, my co-organizer um, to see his availability. So I don't have anything on the um, uh, on, on the calendar yet. Um, I need to get better at that, just to be able to plan a few months out. But sometimes it's just it's dependent on um, my my co-organizer's availability too. So, uh, but yesterday was pretty intense. So I'm I'm still just going to wind down from the energy. It's it's a good good, you know, like being in this being caught in a riptide. Oh, by the way, did, do we want to show them that you said you want to show them pictures from yesterday? Did we not see them? Guys, did you see them? Let me know if you saw them. You didn't oh, you shared them. them already. So Yeah. I, okay. You didn't see them. I thought maybe you would have seen them yourself. No, but if you shared with them already, just so they have an idea what we're yeah. talking about. But okay. So, all right. Well, okay. Well, I'm going to let you get back to your, um, your flight. And okay. thank you, everyone. And um, I will... We'll talk about possibly doing a live stream when I'm back in, yeah, you know, in the uh, in the egg. So yeah, so the, the egg of five D. So you know, 5D. and just to recap real quick, why we call it the egg? I mean, this is where a lot of the things are blooming from. That I mean, come on, we have this issue with um, the uh, squatters, and then they just pass this bill here in Florida. You know, and it just, when that happened, they passed this bill that there are no squatter rights. Um, when they passed that, I'm like, yeah, this is why I call it the egg. This is where so much is blossoming from. Yeah. So, and then, and then like, just to add to that, the event that happened yesterday here in New York, we brought it up to, you know, it came from Florida. Yeah. Yeah. So we're touching, we're touching yeah. everywhere. So it's, it's, it's just, yes, you know, it's hatching. It's going to yeah. hatch. And yeah, what comes out of it. Right. So and and, and I just, you know, I don't want to just glorify, glor, uh, glorify uh, Florida all over the place. I hope that there are many eggs out there. Mm. This is yes, that's a yeah. that's a great concept. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. So, yeah. OK. All right. all right. Well, thank you. Listen, thanks so much. I can't wait. I should be there for the April one, the April event. OK. Yeah. Um. So I'm excited about that. Um, and, um, I will let you go now. And then guys, what I will do is I'm going to take, uh, like a two minute break and then I'm going to get back to stay with you for a half an hour more. Okay. All right. Percy, All right. Thanks then. everyone. Thanks. Have a great night. All right, guys. Uh, like I said, I will be back in about two minutes.
Okay, guys, I am back. Um, let me get me back on the screen here. So, guys, hey, um, Shan Huli, thank you so much for that donation. I deeply appreciate that. Shan, you had a question that you wanted me to ask the tarot, did you not? Um, and yeah, you were the first one who had asked. And uh, for anyone else, I do have about 20 minutes left. And if you want a, a quest, if you want to ask a question with the tarot, um, this is actually the first time I do this on uh, Rumble. I've done this on YouTube, you know, back in the day before they were, you know, Naziville. But <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is my first time doing this on Rumble. So this is cool. So yes, I'm going to go ahead and answer a question for you. Um, Shan, uh, and you go ahead and you may need some time to type it up. So go ahead and take your time doing that. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Interesting. Okay. I want to get... I've got two cards that flew out, and I want to get one more for you, actually. And if there's a very specific question that you want to ask, feel free to ask as well. Aside from this message that's going to come through, um, I know you said a. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so I know you said a card for your highest good, but I definitely felt like I needed to take out more cards. Um, actually, the first two cards that flew out are enough because this is almost kind of like the same thing as um, the the Queen of Swords here. So. Interesting. So you've got the nine of cups, the queen of swords, and the ace of swords here. So it's really important that actually it's interesting because your dreams, what you're desiring really is not so distant from you at all. Not at all. Um, I don't know if they feel distant to you. Um, I actually get the sense that they don't feel distant to you. However, I do get the sense that there may be a concern about sacrificing certain things in your life that would uh, bring you to these desires, to these really wish fulfillment. And what that is, uh, I don't necessarily know, but uh, things, and at least one thing, but it does feel like multiple things to me, uh, that is of your heart's desire, wish fulfillment. And so, the sacrifice is not as difficult as you might think, not at all, but, um, but sacrifice nonetheless. So there are certain things that you have to be bold enough to cut out that you know are actually stifling you. And how do you know what it is time to cut out? That which no longer allows you to feel that you are being true to yourself. That which... Um, which um, challenges your integrity. So there may be people around you that are sort of, um, mm, you may even feel alone, uh, like, uh, well, if I, if I cut these people out, I'll be alone. Um, uh, and it's actually, it's not about cutting anybody out to tell you the truth. It's just about cutting out kind of, They're giving me the visual of, of, of someone drawing the line, right? Kind of like the old Bugs Bunny cartoon where they draw the line in the sand and says, you know, this is my limit. I can't, I, I won't go anymore. But they lure you to go over the line. And what you end up doing is sort of 
kind of selling yourself out or, you know, challenging your own integrity. And you don't want to do that. You definitely don't want to do that. But it's not about cutting them out per se. It's not about that. It's about cutting. It's it's about your own discipline, your own discipline. Um, to not do that to yourself. And that is linked to that. If you can do that, if you can do that, if you can stick to who you are and your own integrity, it sounds easier than it is because people say, well, who wouldn't want to stick to themselves and who wouldn't want to live in their integrity and, and, and live how they believe. But so many people don't. So many people don't. Um, listen, I'm still challenged by it too. Um, and that's the, there are bad things about having a hard head, but the good thing about having a hard head is that I, I stick to who I am. Um, so you will be surprised how much of your dreams would start pouring in when you make this little change. Now, as far as these people staying or going from your life, and that's up to them. It's not about you cutting them out. It's about you cutting out the way you might kind of like sell yourself out to them or to their suggestions in a way, right? Um, so there you go. There you go. If you want to ask one uh, more specific question, like, will this happen? Or, you know, um, how should I approach so and so? Or then go ahead, feel free, okay? Um, is there anyone else? I do have uh, 15 minutes left. If anyone else would uh, like to ask a question, it's just $2 a question. Um, but it's not, not, not an additional two dollars for you, Shan, because um, you know you were so generous to give twenty there. So thank you so much for that once again. And Shan, you're asking. Thank you. Well, you're very welcome. And am I calling in my soulmate, opening my heart again after a terrible relationship? Okay, let's take out something for that. Okay. I want to give it a good shuffle before I take out cards. All right. All right. I have the devil here. I have the page of pentacles and the seven of wands. All right. All right. And at the bottom, the four of pentacles. All right. So I'm glad. Okay. You, you clearly, you do want to get to that point where you're calling in your soulmate. Um, you know, you, you want to get to that point where you're becoming ready, more and more ready. And so that's good. I'm happy about that intention um, that you have for yourself. Are you ready just yet? The honest answer is not quite yet. You still have some, um, you still have some uh, patterns that you want to get rid of. I think you're still attracted to the same types of people. So you might if you were to date seriously at this point, you might actually fall into the same pattern of kind of pulling in the same types of people. So, um, so, 
uh, it wouldn't be a good time to settle into anything. All right. Because you want to, while it's true that we can't, we, how do I say this? Initially, we think that we can't uh, change who we're attracted to initially. But you have to understand that, you know, they say that the heart wants what the heart wants. That's not necessarily 100% true. It's true for this level of frequency, but not necessarily this level of frequency. So what you're still doing is basically changing your frequency. When you actually change your frequency, okay, um, you will see you'll stop being attracted to what you used to be attracted to, okay? It almost seems like if you try to date right now, some people use this sort of um, tactic of going for someone totally different. But yeah, that's on the outside. Maybe a, a different kind of look. Maybe previously you dated blue collar. Now you'll date white collar. Something different about them. But that difference on the outside really doesn't actually make a difference unless the, the, the frequency has changed. And so what the devil is, don't be scared of the devil. Um, all it's just telling me is that you're still, um, you're still in resonance with some frequencies that are not helpful towards, that are not conducive towards the relationship that you're actually looking for. Also, you'll start getting clear on the actual relationship that you are looking for. That goes just that goes beyond just the 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 um the obvious things that people are looking for, which is peace, love, and happiness. Um, but uh, but yeah, um, you'll be able to add details to that, and you should add details to that um, over time. Um, now, what I see here too with the Page of Pentacles. Okay. There's, the, the, there's a, there's a multidimensional message in this. So I'm trying to, I'm processing it like a computer. All right. So first of all, take the time to sort of, it's more emotional. It's not really physical to slow down because, um, you do have good options around you. I mean, someone could even possibly make you an offer but, and it's not that it's bad, but it's that you just wouldn't be interested because the resonance is not there on your end. It's not there because uh, I hate to say that you may be looking for someone to soothe you out of the old situation, out of the old relationship. I mean, you're out of it. Yes. But to soothe you out of that vibration. And what you may not understand right now is that the only thing that would actually soothe you out of it is a person who is as toxic as the last person you just dealt with. Because there's a, why? Because there's a sense of familiarity. So you'll have a momentary, because of that sense of familiarity, you're familiar with that frequency, which is not that great. You'll have a moment of feeling comfortable, healed, but then you'll see that it'll turn again the way it's always been, the problematic way that it's always been, okay? And... um So you don't need to be looking for anyone to save you out of this frequency. Just simply do the inner work, do meditating. And honestly, I know not a lot of people don't want to hear this, but don't date for a good, a good while. Because when you 
refrain from dating, it changes the frequency. It start and then also learn to be comfortable in particularly in particular on your own. And I know that this is um, easier said than done because I remember when I just wasn't comfortable on my own. I remember it so clearly. And I tried to work on myself and I'm like, how do I make this happen? How do I gather up enough discipline to even make that happen? And that's exactly what you just have to have is discipline. Either one, either discipline, most people take the other route and the other route is kind of being beat to a pulp to the point where you're turned off now by that frequency. And that's how people ditch a frequency. They're turned off by it. When instead of being turned off by it, let's not judge it. That's them in their toxicity. You can be discerning about it. That's not the same as a judgment. You can be discerning about it. And um, then just um, choose a new frequency. But in order to choose a new frequency, again, that alone time is going to be helpful so that we distance ourselves from the other frequency that we no longer want to be associated with and be a part of. Okay. So because of the attachments from the past, any good newcomers, you would not actually respond to, even if they're good for you, they could be incredibly good looking even. And it's like, well, no, I just don't feel it. So that's very possible that you actually have people come like that. But see, see, I can tell you, oh, yeah, soulmates coming in. But what does that mean when we will just turn our back on it because we're not ready? You see the sort of internal dilemma? Uh, and... Well, you're going to successfully release this old frequency, okay? You're going to successfully release this old frequency, okay? Um, you're divinely protected against it so long as you call that in, all right? And um, if you just muster up a little discipline. I hope that this, I don't usually give dates. I only give them if they're giving it to me. Um, and they don't always, uh, but I think that you will find yourself very different within six to seven months. And that's the time that you'll be able to, um, call in your soulmate in, in, and actually, uh, pull in someone that's worthy of what you really want. So I hope that that was helpful. Okay. All right, guys, let me know in e either either the uh, comments or um, here in the chat, or if I shut this off um, and you reach it later, you can let me know in the comments, do you want me to do these kinds of readings? And... Um, oh, thank you, Shan. Thank you very much. Thank you. She says, she says, wow, I love that. You are wonderful. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I, I deeply appreciate that. So, um, yeah, and I've shared with you guys how when I do the video readings, it's a totally different dynamic when, when I, than when I'm working with someone one-on-one. -on -one. And then if I see you in front of me face-to-face, -face, then it's forget it. So just you know, it's a totally different dynamic. So I think some of you are getting to see also a different side of me and how I work. And that's what we do. We wear different hats and different personalities for different parts of this, this video game that we call earth. I have a really nice side. I have a really tough side. I have a really bitchy side, just like everybody else. We're multi, well, we're multi-dimensional and we have, um, in essence, multiple, personalities, multiple hats to wear, not to be confused with 
personality disorder, but you know what I mean. We have to be flexible. We have to be adaptable. Um, because isn't it more comfortable to live in a flexible body? That's why it's good to do some working out, some yoga, stuff like that. Same concept. All right. It's more comfortable in that type of flexible, uh, flexible body. All right. So I am going to cut it short here, but for future live streams, I could do one that's strictly dedicated to this type of thing for an hour with you guys, which would just be $2 a question and uh, anything extra is just up to you. And I thank you so much. Oh yeah, I'm closing out. Happy Easter, by the way, Easter shenanigans today. Of course, definitely. I know we all um, participated in our little shenan shenanigans today, I guess. Um, yeah, um, Raquel, to answer your question really quick, because I had addressed you at the beginning of this. Um, yes, I agree quite a bit with what um, Archaics is talking about concerning the April 8th eclipse. And basically, there's nothing that really needs to happen on that day, but there, there's going to be these, you know, goddamn elitists that want to take advantage of the energies. The only thing that's really happening is heightened energy. So I would suggest that people, not just on that day, on that day, but even around that day, as we get closer to April 8th, really meditate towards the peace that you want to see. Because you can utilize the energies, too, of the eclipses, of the moon cycles. You, you can use them in your own way and for positivity. But all they're doing is they're trying to hijack the energy. Let's take it back. You know, if we can all get together and do a simple prayer and or meditation um, and, and basically shift of the vibration of these days with heightened energy, such as the eclipse, we can actually thwart them. You know, when you do these meditations, guys, those are the kinds of things that get the ETs a little bit more involved because they're not going to save you and they're not going to change everything for you. They're, they're will, they will only enhance what you already do, just as the white hats would do similarly. And so when you do these meditations, they say, okay, the earth people are asking for this. We're not going to let that bridge fall. We're not going to let this happen. We're not going to, do you see what I'm saying? And that's a way that the ETs can get involved. It's about giving them permission. And that's partially what the meditations do. Okay. So you're not praying to ETs, by the way. Absolutely not. You're praying to source. But then source says, hey, ET is going and do this. It works something like that, if that makes any sense. Okay. So they're hijacking these energies. It's not that, you know, some biblical thing needs to happen. They want to make some biblical thing happen. Um, and uh, let's try not and let them. And if they, if they succeed, whatever they succeed at, whatever they're able to do, that doesn't mean it has to touch you in your uh, personal life in your, per in your, in the world that you create for yourself in your personal life and understand too, that some of these negative things aren't necessarily always as bad as they seem, because there are individuals on the planet at the same time that do need to receive their own karma. So some of these bad things are people getting their own karma. That's in essence, I don't want to say deserved. That's more harsh, but they are the results, nonetheless, of their vibration, too. Everybody is. Does that make sense? Thank you. I aim for discernment from what's a uh, beauty of nature, the eclipse, and what the government is using tech blips. Yeah, yeah. But we can counteract that with our energy. It's just that, you know, you know, the elite, they're the ones who set up the institutions to call these energies satanic. They set up the churches that say, that says doing this work is satanic. So what happens 
because you believe it's satanic and you don't want it to, uh, you know, you don't want to know about it. Well, it's hidden. That's a cult. That's the occult. It's hidden. And when it's hidden from you, they are able to use it against you. So, um, but that doesn't mean that you can't be safe in your personal world. And you absolutely can be. I remember my grandmother, I, I must have been six years old. I'm going to say this and then I'm going to let you guys go. I must have been about six years old. Um, she told me, she laid it out like really simple for me that, um, and I'm going to use, they are religious biblical terms, but they're, they're true and they make sense. And she said, if I'm a bad person and I'm sitting here and you're a good person and you're sitting here, it doesn't even matter how close you are to me. When the end times come, boom, that house is going to fall on me and you're going to be safe because you're a good person. Um, and we're going to see a lot of that. The neighbor's house across the street can get blown apart while yours is just fine. In fact, I know somebody who that something like that happened to actually last year, but that's, a, you know, a story we're not going to get into. Um, and um, in fact, if I have them on and they talk about it and they want to talk about it, that, that'd be cool. Um, so it really is that simple. And that's the kinds of times that we're living in right now. Now she used, you know, typical biblical terms, good and bad. And it's not quite that. It's more, uh, it's more expansive than that. But nonetheless, it's that same concept. Okay. So um, if you're in your vibration, uh, you can be untouchable regardless of what's happening around you. Okay. All right, guys. So with that, with that, I'll depart and um, wishing you guys all the best. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, I'll see you next time. Take care.